So I am doing, I'm asking some questions for the I Got Better campaign. Um, this is all about recovery and helping people that are in like maybe lower levels of recovery than you are and sort of helping them giving inspirational stories. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions. What is one of your best coping tools? Uh, patience. Patience. <laughs> um, I have, uh, um, I've had a lot of problems when I was younger with a bad anger problem mm -hmm. and I didn't have patience back then and since then um, I've took control of my anger, I no longer lose it and mm -hmm. it's primarily because I'm uh, very patient and uh, actually the other thing is being able to help, helping people um, has helped me a lot. I've been able to find closure for a lot of things that have happened to me that I wouldn't have been able to find closure otherwise. Cool. So, what was the turning point in your recovery? When I was going to middle school, uh, I had such a huge anger management problem where I was losing my temper a couple times a day and it was really easy to set off. <laughs> and the, um, I had everyone in the school teasing me. Uh, and one year I decided I had enough of it, and so I, uh, I decided to ignore them. By the end of that year, I had only a bully and a lackey teasing me, so the next year I decided to up it a level and do the worst possible thing I could to them, and by the end of that year, um, the bully wanted to be my friend, the lackey, uh, I could actually make him lose his temper and he couldn't make me lose my temper, and I'd have a report card that said Ty would not be excessively nice at school because that was the worst thing I could think of to get back at them. Wow. Okay. Um, what is your hope for the future of the mental health system? I hope we don't have one, at least in the sense that we have one now. Uh, we, have, we rely so heavily on labels and uh, labels, it, it all begins with stigma. When you, when you get classified as with a diagnosis, you're now getting a new stigma attached to your person. And that can be very confusing, it can be very damaging, and it's even difficult for providers because the providers have to target those labels first. And when they target the labels first, um, they're not able to give the full treatment that they could be providing. So I'm a huge advocate for domains of life because... What's domains of life? I, I'll explain that. <laughs> Um, domains of life is that rather than treating an illness, you treat the problem. And for example, if I'm stressed out because I'm homeless, the solution is not to give me two uh, anti-anxiety pills and call you in a week. The solution is to have me help me with my housing issues. And by helping me with my housing issues, you're helping me with my mental health as well. <laughs> so by focusing on the problem rather than an illness, and uh, there are many different domains of life out there. Rusty Clark has um, three domains that cross over which create more, more domains. SAMHSA has four life domains and the, I've heard as many as 12 um, and as few as three. So it'd be nice if we could come together and d design a d domains of life where none of, no systems required it, where mm -hmm. um, instead of having to work with a person because they have a substance abuse issue, uh, you're able to work with a person because they need help uh, controlling their usage of substances instead of helping someone who is homeless. You don't have to put that label on them either. You can help a person find housing. So I, mm -hmm. I really think that's a good approach for any age, for any system. Who was the most supportive person in, um, you know, reaching a level of recovery? Who was the most supportive person? My mom, probably. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. We're, we've been very close my entire life, and um, she's a wonderful person that has inspired a lot, uh, not, not, only into, not only for myself, but from everyone I've known around her. She is a true amazing hero that um, once people start to realize the, the things that she's accomplished in her life, I think people will be very impressed by it. Um, considering, you know, my early, most, for most of my life, her, she had just as much problems as I did, where um, she had some severe mental health issues and she had no purpose. And then she found that and um, found a passion and then led uh, to uh, a really 
you know, strong consumer movement in Colorado and inspired many people to follow her. She was one of two people that would had a job in the mental health as a consumer um, in Colorado making uh, more than $50,000 wow. a year with uh, a high school education, no college degree. And that alone is just unbelievably di difficult to achieve to be able to transition off benefits and mm -hmm. to be a, such a consumer leader. I wish I had more time to talk about that. So my last question is, um, if you could go back in time and sort of talk to your past self when you were at your lowest, when, when you were in most need of support, what would be something that you would say? What do you wish that you knew back then that now you know? I would give myself a good hit on the back of the head and say, <laughs> get your act together. Um, <laughs> You know, it's really difficult, and, and I, I can look back and, at the, some of the worst parts of my life and, and say, I really, really wish I wouldn't have done those things. Mm -hmm. But really the truth is, those things have built character in me, and going through all the difficult things, um, and even having some of the worst part, being bad in a sense, um, helped, helped me grow, you know. Yeah. I, I believe that we're human and part of being human is um, learning from our mistakes. So uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really want to correct myself because then I wouldn't have grown the way that I have. But at the same time, I really think, you know, there's been some stupid things that I regret. Um, and, you know, I, I think everyone needs the hope for the future that they need to believe that uh, their life has meaning and a purpose and um, I'm still trying to find my meaning and my purpose and I think as we grow as individuals um, it, that becomes more meaningful so. So the whole purpose of the I Got Better campaign is to sort of be like you know we're in a higher place of recovery and we want to sort of help the people that are suicidal that are really struggling. What would, do you have a message that you could give to those people that are just, you know, on the brink of self-destruction and are really, really struggling in their own, their own lives? Yes. Um, everyone's going to tell you that you, you're not alone and that, um, you, that they understand you and you won't feel like that that's true. But um, the thing is, when you start to open up to them, you start to realize that we have more in common and that um, life can be difficult but it can be a strength. What You are, you are a strong person <laughs> and um, when you can start working with the people around you in your life you can uh, start to open up and, and you'll, you'll get healing from it being able to take strength from those difficult times in your life so it may be rough now um, and then I know for me who has dealt with suicidal and hopelessness and feeling like um, there is no point um, I know that you can work towards a future where there is a point and that hope is more of willpower that if you can find a purpose if you can look for something that's meaningful and it doesn't have to be anything big like a job a career a life goal it could be you know artwork or a mm -hmm. hobby then you can start to find a better a better purpose and a, a, a healing way to move towards the future